The Confocal Fluorescence Microscope. Brought to you by Vanessa Aaron. This is for my instrumental analysis term project. The basics. The Confocal Fluorescence Microscope, shortened to CFM, uses a laser to excite samples causing them to fluoresce and produce photons that can be converted into images that highlight different properties of samples. It also uses optical sectioning to take pieces of images, produce, and create an entire image. The CFM employs a pinhole screen to sort photons so only the desired wavelength passes through the photomultiplier tube to be converted to an electrical signal. The screen helps to create a higher resolution image. This quality is the best selling point of this microscope as compared to other microscopes that cause fluorescence. This is a schematic I created myself for the confocal fluorescence microscope. It uses a laser to produce the excitation light, which in turn prov provides high intensities. The laser light, which is the red line on the screen, reflects off the dichroic mirror, which reflects light shorter than the wavelength selected, then passes through two mirrors that are vertically and horizontally rotating, which allows the laser to scan across the sample. This scanning technique also allows a confocal fluorescence microscope to be called a laser scanning microscope. The molecules inside the sample absorb the high energy excitation light, which increases its energy. The dyes, which were put in the sample for this purpose, cause the sample to fluoresce when hit with the excitation light. Some of the molecules lose energy internally and other molecules emit photons with energy that is longer than the selected wavelength. The emitted light, which is the le yellow line on the screen, passes through the rotating mirrors and the dichroic mirror. The focal point of the second objective lens in the microscope focuses light from the first objective lens's focal point and the resulting wavelength passes through a screen with a pinhole or a slit depending on the microscope so only the desired wavelengths are read from the sample. The light that results from the pinhole is measured by the photomultiplier tube. The incoming photons enter the tube's electrical field and bounce off the dynodes and the anode to create a current that is read by a current meter that measures the amount of electrons collected at the anode and is converted to an electrical signal that is then read by a computer. The quanti qualitative data for this instrument is the resolution and the quantitative data is the amount of photons emitted. The readout that is created is never a complete image of a sample, but a compilation of images produced by a microscope that is built up by the computer to create the full image, which is what I was talking about earlier with the optical sectioning. Out of plane, unfocused light has been rejected by the pinhole in the screen, which results in a better resolved image. So in summary, the laser passes through the mirrors and the lenses to create to scan the sample and the sample fluoresces to produce photons that travel back through the lenses and mirrors to the pinhole screen. To the pin the pinhole sorts <clears throat> the photons so only the desired wavelength passes through to the photomultiplier tube to be converted to an electrical signal. Is CFM the best option? The confocal fluorescence microscope is more advantageous than the regular fluorescence microscope because the CFM eliminates the out-of-focus haze, haze, which occurs with regular fluorescence samples. The CFM has fine focus and the ability to create 3D images by the computer. The ability to see an entire sample without haze is beneficial. The fluorescence microscope shows the entire sample, but due to its resolution, only a small part of the sample is in focus. Both microscopes contain the pinhole filtering screen, but the CFM has a smaller pinhole opening, allowing less of the focus light to enter the PMT as opposed to the fluorescence microscope, which has a wider opening. The two-photon excitation microscope may be more useful than CFM depending on the situation. The two-photon microscope also uses fluorescence to achieve its imaging of live samples. The excitation occurring in this microscope is due to infrared light to prevent damaging of the cells that could be caused by UV excitation and CFM. It uses two photons to create excitation, which is a technique to increase resolution. Confocal fluorescence in action. The research I found about CFM highlights N-decane.
CFM is a new technique that is being used to study surface properties of liquids and liquids. The goal of this research was to use CFM to measure the disbursement of water by the dye molecule DCM dissolved in surfactant-free and decane droplets, which are, is a component found in gasoline. The interface between two liquids plays a major role in clo collodial and biological processes and material separation. CFM is essential in this study because the probe volume of a confocal microscope less than a femtometer can be obtained so the background noise limiting the sensitivity of the measurement is greatly reduced. <clears throat> the small probe volume is also useful in the detection of droplets dispersion. The dispersion of the dye in water can be used to derive the orientation of the polarizability occurring between the two samples and decane droplets and water. CFM was advantageous for this research because the smaller opening of the pinhole resulted in fluorescence which was more focused in the amount of wavelengths outside of the desired range entering the detector was minimized. By analyzing the data, these researchers were able to determine that 1. DCM molecules are located in, an, in a polar surface region of the end decane droplets, and 2. The polarity increases when decreasing the droplet diameter. Increasing the curvature of the droplet diameter can also increase polarity, as was discovered. The future work for this methodology would be in studying the curved liquid interfaces in flat liquids and their effects on polarity. Conclusion The confocal fluorescence microscope is an important instrument used in research due to its desirable ability to minimize background noise. Its unique pinhole screen gives it the ability to minimize background noise by filtering the wavelength that is necessary to be detected. The resolution is an upgrade from the traditional fluorescence microscope, but it is not the most useful microscope to use when examining live samples. These qualities give CFM a promising future with studies involving interface between two liquid properties that are re requiring fur further study with biological processes and material separation. And it also makes really awesome images. This is my references, and thank you for your time.